I want my life in a Borani. If you don't know what Borani is, you'll know by the end of this video. <laughs> Do you know what I want my life in? What? A shawarma. This is my friend Melik. She goes by Mel. And once the COVID restrictions opened up enough in London, I decided to hop on the overground to see her. She lives in North London in an area called Tottenham. Shout out to all you football fans. I'd never been and I was really excited to check it out. Hey, come on in, come through. She is one of the better home cooks I know, so you can imagine I was really excited to cook with her. I don't actually know how to do this <laughs> Today. Uh, today we're cooking fella köftesi. Fela köftesi is from the region of Adana and Hatay in Turkey. It's a predominantly Kurdish region. There's a lot of Arabian influence there as well. Uh, and it's a really beautiful dish that's cooked across uh, Turkey and loved very much. It's a, I would say it's a Kurdish dumpling. We call it a köfte because uh, köfte you, you would use to refer to not just meat, meat patties but any kind of mix uh like a doughy kind of mix that you cook down um yeah maybe even go as far as to say it's a kurdish gnocchi <laughs> i was born in istanbul and we moved here when i was four so i really have grown up in london and uh, yeah, I've got a Kurdish background and food is a real strong part of how we keep our culture and sense of identity alive, I would say. So, this is part of my, this is my favourite part of the pantry. These are where all the grains are, so they're sectioned. I've never seen such an organised kitchen. Wait, I need to show them the back. Right? <laughs> okay. And like all I mean, it the... does please me a lot, a lot. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> so these were old um, hummus containers that I got my cousins to save because like they've got cafes and wedding catering stuff. I love how in small um, kitchen spaces you've got to get more creative with True. how you use it. Yes. I love that. I love having a small kitchen. I've got to get you to try my chili oil as well. I'm thinking about like, <laughs> like I'm getting I'm thinking seriously about getting into this chili or business like I'm obsessed. So it's got Aleppo chili in it. That's the base foundation. I'll say no more. Oh, is it a secret? <laughs> I mean not really. I think I've shared it with everyone on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> but still, I'm trying to make it mysterious. And are we gonna be putting this on top of our our meal? Whilst we could do that, we're gonna go next level. What? Yeah, we're gonna do chili butter. So oh. that's oil. We're gonna get the butter frothing, and you know when you get the butter slightly burnt, but then you have Aleppo chili in it as well, and that's a very, very Kurdish thing to drizzle on top of things. It's oh. such a fan, and it just takes things up a notch and makes it amazing, and works really well with your garlic yogurt. So a lot of Kurdish dishes, a lot of Middle Eastern dishes as well, have like a garlic yogurt and then a chili butter drizzle. It's bulgur wheat, yeah? Yeah. But it's a fine bulgur wheat and you can use it like a couscous. So you don't boil it, you just soak it. This is probably much more than we need, um, but this is a, a, around the right amount for what, because we put one egg in there. Um, but anything we don't use, what's great is you, you can just freeze it. So we're gonna shape into dumplings and then we're gonna freeze them and you can use them whenever you need. You don't need the measurement for this. And that's the great thing about this dish and um, these koftas, they're so forgiving. Like you, um, you don't have to be exact with it. There's a saying, um, it's an eye decision. So you, you measure by eye, goes karare. But I love those recipes because it gives you the freedom to make something your own and to build confidence and go, there's, not, it's, there's no such thing as it, this going wrong. This is, you just make it your own. Yes! Yeah, unless you're baking. Don't try that. Don't mess it down. <laughs> <Don't>. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, so so <laughs> again, I'm gonna say in a mysterious way, you need a thumbs level of water <laughs> above the couscous. Perfect. Okay. okay. <laughs> so I would say about a centimeter of water above the bulgur wheat. And like not even a centimetre of water, do you see? Yeah. Like it's, what, would you say half a centimetre? Yeah. Yeah? Oh. Also, look, it's already absorbing it, so you can't... Okay, do you so see? basically just, just covered. Just covered like, uh, the water needs to go half a centimetre above. And then gotcha. you go, you cover that up, right? And we'll um, just prepare and wash our spinach whilst that's soaking. So about 10, 20 minutes. Okay. Should we put on a timer or no? It's no. just by feel. Yeah, but you feel Come these on, what's things. a timer? What's a timer? <laughs> <laughs> just spinach from um, the farm market. I mean, Mel, should, should we tell them about your spanctuary? <laughs> <laughs> I've been wanting to have you over anyway. Yeah, my space is my spanctuary. Um, spanct <laughs> I was gonna say, my space is my spanctuary. <laughs> is this some, it, does this reveal something about my inner world? No, my space is my sanctuary. This was a, what I was gonna say, oh my God. It, it it actually takes me back, going back to something deep. I think I wrote something recently about taking pride in your home, but it, that's, that, that has nothing to do with the size of your home or the, the, your status, but like that you can take pride in your home in the details of things you could add to it, right? And how much care you put into your, your space, your sanctuary. Your sanctuary. <laughs> <laughs> and I was thinking of my granddad, because you know, when they first, uprooted they had to leave their villages had to start from zero and had to build these homes from nothing and there were ways to take pride in your home and i think it's a, a spiritual and a psychological thing that's so irrespective of how like what, what the size of your space or where you live you know i was trying to say my home is my sanctuary because i take pride in it uh i like I care about the things I put in it. It's not about spending money. Like, it's like an extension of you and part of you, you know. Not enough spanking going <laughs> in, this, in this space. It's not an invitation though. <laughs> anyway, back to spinach, babe. Back to spinach, babe. <laughs> this is a like a wok styly pan that I like to use um, because it's good to fry in and boil in, but you can use a saucepan as well, like, you know, like a pot that you'd boil pasta in and make sauces in as well. I don't want to cook it any more than this, because I like the stalks to stay a little crunchy and the leaves to still be vibrant. Look, the, gr the grains are now soft and fluffy. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some flavor and some binding things. So we're gonna use salcha um, to flavor. And salcha is a tomato and pepper paste mix, sun-dried, which goes in the base and sauces of a lot of Kurdish dishes, a lot of Turkish dishes, a lot of Middle Eastern dishes. So this is a homemade one. But these are ones you can get in the shop, but they sell them in a lot of Middle Eastern stores. So it's like, think like, you know, you get tomato concentrate paste, right? But it's not as sweet or acidic. It's just got a lot more. It's like, it's like if you, you know those sun-dried tomatoes, if you turn that into a paste, it's a lot more flavor. Mm, yeah, really it's like umami. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Ooh, umami, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and you know what? I'm going to get you to try the difference between this Ooh, is the homemade. Okay. Mm. Oh yeah, but intense, yeah? Yeah, Beautiful. intense in a really good way. Yeah, this one's the ready-made one you can get in shops. So the women, what they do is the women in London, there's a whole collective of women that during the summer, peak of summer, usually like July, August, will communicate together to find out the hottest day of the year that is coming, it's this week, get your tomato paste ready. Whoa. So you'll buy the, this ready-made stuff and you'll see all these women in their gardens and if they don't have gardens, they'll borrow each other's 
or you might see them in Finsbury Park or Crystal Park, just spreading ready-made tomato paste out and pepper paste and sun drying it all day and you just keep um, stirring and sun, like uh, under the sun and you that's that that's what you've tasted there and you'll see the difference between this and and then that which has been out in the sun all day different this is yeah this is tastes more like tomato paste that i know yeah. right right so which makes sense yeah i just love the dedication of these women to one get a taste of home mm. right but also to do things properly and this ability this magic of adapting right which is so synonymous with not just kurdish people just migrants who in traveling have to adapt to their environments bring a bit of home but then also like are welcoming in things around them too and then there's this like new stuff that emerges from yeah that. and i think food holds a really strong place in communicating when language is a barrier right so you find different ways to communicate that are often stronger than language, right? <laughs> yeah. There's nothing more like silencing and connecting than just sharing some food together and cooking. And then we're gonna add one egg and a couple of tablespoons of flour and that will help bind it. A tablespoon of this one and another tablespoon of the ready-made one because this one's quite intense and salty. I, I don't want it to be too salty. That will add some flavour and some beautiful colour, and then let's get a uh, stirring. Because it just means I don't get my hands all dyed. The warmer it is, the more um, willing to mix it will be, and knead into a dough. So this mix is the mix used for kibbeh as well. But we're just going to turn these into dumplings. I'm going to taste a little bit to check the salt and um, mm. it's good <laughs> good 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 okay so we'll just cover this up and then set up to get our dumpling shape let's do it is it this will stop the dumplings from sticking to each other and the tray so really important to have a bowl with water to wet your hands because okay. that stops the kofta from sticking so you grab a batch Turn, keep turning and squeezing roughly into like a sausage and then you break apart into like one centimeter rounds like that just with your fingers and then you roll I would say when you're grabbing one just give it another squeeze so they don't crack and you put your finger into shape so yeah so you're going squeeze, squeeze, roll, and that excess liquid in your hand just helps it bind even more, like that. Oh, those look so good. Are mine gonna look that good, Mel? They are. I I have trust in you. Really? I, I really do. Oh. I, I think there's a bit of Kurdish in you. Mel, this. Yeah. So I'm gonna do. How's that look, Mom? <laughs> that looks really good. That's <laughs> perfect. You know. Nice. Squeeze, 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 squeeze and then start roll, rolling them, put a bit of pressure, yeah? Oh my god, I thought you were doing, oh my god, you're doing two at the same time? <laughs> Dude, she's doing two at the same time. <laughs> I'm just, you know, modesty is key in this work. Oh my gosh, <laughs> you're a magician. I did it, I did it, good size ball. They're just so fun to make, um, I think, because they're not scary. That you know, you know what I mean? They're not, oh, they've got to be perfect or like exact. We could make double this batch and this just puts the flour and the shape prevents them from sticking with each other. So this will come back to the boil and then when they start rising to the top, they're done. This is a good mortar and pestle. This doesn't have, this is a preference thing, right? Mm. I mean, how much 
garlic yogurt do you like with your spinach? <laughs> <laughs> Things with yogurt are called borani. Nice. Yeah, it's a Kurdish way of like just with yogurt. Nice. Yeah, so that's ready. I want my life in a borani. <laughs> I love that. Stop. Do you know what I want my life in? What? A shawarma. Whatever meal you give me, <laughs> like, can you give me some bread? And I'm just gonna chuck it all in a, a wrap and just... <laughs> oh, look, look, they're coming to the top already. Look how beautiful they look. They really do. And they keep their gorgeous color. It's grainy, like you can, it, it doesn't look too um, smudgy. You know when it's risen to the top, right? Right, it's cooked, okay. Right? When you take it out of the water, if you can taste the grains and you don't feel like it feels like smudge, mm -hmm. then it's cooked. Um, it will feel soft at first. When you drain and uh, the steam evaporates and it cools a little bit, it gets firmer, which is great. In the same um, pan that we boiled the dumplings in, we're now going to prepare the sauce to fry in. We need to break down the paste in this oil. It's really important to do this bit because you um, it really uh, cooking the paste means it doesn't taste raw or you know you you get another layer of like depth of flavour. And look what happened. So so this really helps break down the sauce. Do you see? So it's becoming more. No, it's more. So you add slowly. Don't you don't want to add a crazy amount. I'm going to chuck these in there. I'm going to add a drizzle more of oil to loosen up. This is my favourite bit. This is my favourite bit in any meal. Uh, <laughs> the chilli butter. <laughs> so good butter is nice because it's just with dishes like this, where it's such a feature, the butter is such a feature, it helps, but it's going to be delicious whatever butter you use. This is Aleppo chili flakes. I do this, this is not traditional. I love using a bit of zaatar, Palestinian zaatar. Ooh. I'm seeing all the gorgeous bubbling that's going on, yeah? Yeah. We want that. We don't add this in the beginning because we don't want this to burn. We'll get with the zaatar. See, look at the gorgeous bubbles. Keep your eye on it. Don't take your eye off it. Look how it's gotten so frothy. So gorgeous, right? <laughs> Turn off the heat. So I'm gonna let it rest for a bit so that I can see what it looks like at the bottom. So often, like when, when there's a chili butter going on top of the dish, you pour it last minute when it's coming to the table because it sizzles and it's like a whole exciting feature. I give it a thumbs up. <laughs> yeah. I'm good. <laughs> oh my God. I'm so excited. <laughs> Holy moly. <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> The flavor situation. I see now why you wanted the spinach to retain its crunch. Yeah. Oh my god. It works well with it. It's so then, good. But the butter, right? But the butter. <laughs> but the butter, right? I want to make this. <laughs> good. Do you for feel Connor? I want to make this for myself. <laughs> well, you've got so much. We've got so much of the mix. I think you should take some home. Then you can you could put this oh in soup god. as well. Yes. Like, you could put this. Oh, I would or love just fry that. It. Use it like you would a gnocchi. Oh my god. I would love it. You know, I find that these days, friend and food time is all sweeter. So you can make this meal for your friends and family. Let's do a quick recap. Pour boiling water over fine bulgur wheat and let that sit for about 20 minutes. Add one egg, some flour, and the tomato paste salt job. Slip on a glove and mix. Mix, mix, mix. Form the dough into these adorable little balls and boil them just like you would a gnocchi. They're ready when they float to the top. Cook down the salcha and add a bit of hot water to loosen it up. Stir in the dumplings and now prepare your spinach, which will then be mixed with a garlic yogurt. 
Mixy mixy, and now it's time for the chili butter. Add a lepo pepper and a bit of za'atar. Get it nice and bubbly and plate up. For the full recipe written out, check out Mel's Instagram. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you liked it. Big ol' thumbs up. Mel, why don't you tell them actually what not to forget? Don't forget to keep it quirky. Always. Bye. <laughs> and uh, Jamie Oliver just, no. uh, <laughs> she just shouted you out pretty hardcore. Anyway. Food should never be a thing of like uh, something that's pretentious, right? Something that's um, food should always be accessible. I think I love London's um, food vibrancy. I don't know how else to put it. Like it's just so many languages, so many people speaking to you in different ways, and it's there if you go to it and.